I do want to bring up is that we have received complaints of people calling 911 and not – and just basically nobody can't answer. We've received several complaints. One, we actually had a suicide. The person ran into the station. The gentleman who called 911 was frantic, ran into the station, spread and committed suicide. They were able to get a hold of Bexar County Sheriff's Department. So we've been – just so you know, we've been emailing them. We've made several phone calls to Leticia Rogers. So far, we haven't really received a response from her. So I reached out today to Sheriff Salazar and requested a phone call back so we can get some service because we need to know that if somebody calls 911, somebody's going to be in the other line and they're going to answer that phone, especially if we end up with a major situation. And I always go back to looking at what if we have an evolved day and somebody calls for help and they don't get the help. That's going to really, really upset me because now our citizens are not going to be able to reach somebody in the other line. So we're looking in that. We're addressing it. There will be emails going back and forth so that everything is documented and shared with our city attorney. So in this case, we have to – I just want to make the mayor and council aware of that and the citizens aware that we are – we're aware of it. We're addressing the issue. So I stand for any questions. I just want to reiterate I'm glad you worked on the 9-11 issue because when it takes 11 minutes before somebody answers the phone, that's not acceptable because they're calling because it's life or death most of the time. It's an emergency. And like you said, it's just another evaluation. It's one of the deaths in school here and they don't get a response. That's why we need to elevate this as high as the sheriff's office and let him know and take the memo for record and it's on their hands. Let them know the service is now sent and their choice to react. It's their responsibility to react to the service. And if it continues, we just have to weigh our options in the future for what we want to do because that's not acceptable to our citizens to get that type of service. In our traffic unit, I noticed a reduction of citations. Now, is it the residents are behaving, driving the speed limit, or do we have a reduction of officers? It kind of comes and goes. Sometimes you'll see high months, you'll see low months. It just depends on what the officer's activity is. Because remember, if we happen to have more training going on, sometimes during the summer because, of course, we don't have the schools, there's a little bit less traffic on the roadway. We know there's still traffic. So I'm not saying there's none, but there's a little less because the officer's not going to use the training. Of course, we've been really harping on tactical training, emergency response training for our officers so that they're prepared in case that bad day happens. So sometimes it pulls officers off. Our traffic unit, even though they're trapped, they still are attached to the patrol shifts. So sometimes they have to cover for calls. So if we have the officer working the evening shift, usually our evening shift is our busiest shift, and officers are handling a lot more calls at that time. So some of our numbers have come down. Our day shift officer, he's one of our – he goes out and really enforces traffic. He loves it. But unfortunately, he's still recovering from that injury that he received a couple months ago during a foot pursuit, a foot chase. So we may have to make some adjustments as – with the third shift officer, have to move into days. We have to make adjustments, especially since school is getting ready to start. Because that school zones, the activity around the schools become a great concern of ours, speeding in those areas, of course, kids in the crosswalk. I know we have Judson School District Police, but I feel better with our officers out there dealing with the situation in case something happens. I'm glad you're addressing the DWIs at night because I picked up five beer cans and a couple of liquor bottles on Keyhoff Road. Yes, sir. You know, and that's a sign something's going on. Yes, sir. On Keyhoff Road. And we need to address it now before it becomes an issue. Right. Yes, sir. Right. And code compliance. Yes, sir. A lot of activities on the weekend. Yes, sir. Is there anything being done to rotate their shifts maybe on weekends to cover? Yes, sir. We're going to actually evaluate it. We talked about – we had a discussion this morning about it, myself and the assistant chief, because they fall under him. We had that discussion this morning about looking at rotating hours, rotating just days, what days they're working. Because we know we have some activity during the weekends as well, especially when we're not there. So we're really going to have to look at that and potentially even increasing the code enforcement division itself, adding an additional person. Because we are growing, 
And as we grow, there's more activity that's occurring, different hours that's occurring, so we need to be available to the citizens in case something like that happens. So we'll be looking at that and evaluating that, sir. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Chief. I appreciate you bringing us up to speed, and certainly the 911 complaint just is very concerning. I know you know how serious that is. Yes, ma'am. You know, public safety is our number one responsibility. And can you tell me about when that happened? When was it that you made aware? We've had several complaints about it. It's happened over the last few months, the last couple months, actually. And one, ma'am, is just – one is too many. I mean, it's – it doesn't – you know, and I can go numbers, but if one – if it's just one call that's missed, that is too many. Right. And so that's why we're getting together now. We're making phone calls. We're making – we're sending emails to address those issues because we need to address it. And the other one happened – the one I'm referring to happened probably about three weeks ago. And, you know, as I said, just one call is – especially now that the kids are getting ready to go back to school. You know, it just – it's not acceptable. It's just – it's a matter of life and death. And that's why we created – Our 911 services. And that's why we created 911, ma'am, is so that people did have a resource to get help. When you're talking about a PD, I'm proud of our response time. We're responding in three to five minutes, usually three minutes. Usually we're in that three. I say three to five because that's – that's – five is probably, you know, being very generous. We're usually responding within three minutes. And that's not just us, but your fire department is responding quickly as well. They're getting there on scene and they're taking care of our citizens. And so when we're not able to respond and we're not getting the information, you can evaluate it this way. If somebody's not answering the phone out there, how do we know what's going on? We don't know. We're in the blind. So it's something that's very concerning, not only just as the police chief, but as the interim city manager. It's concerning. And we're going to address the issue and get down to the bottom of what's going on. And simply, if the county needs to handle – hire more people, they need to hire more people and get them in there because it's something we can't tolerate. I just – I have had instances where, you know, I've tried to reach someone, but, you know, this type of incident, you know, is greatly concerning. And I know we are all accountable to the citizens. Life and death is not a – it's something you deal with every day. But to me, that's what should be our number one priority is trying to make sure that that is addressed, not just by email, but, you know, by person or whatever it takes to be. We're phone calls and emails. I'm a city council member. This is the first I've heard about it. Yes, ma'am. Well, ours is phone calls and emails, and that's what we talk to our person to, and it's documented what we're doing with it. Because the thing is that we – I do not – I don't want that hanging over our head as a city, as a city official, as a representative of this community. We don't want that hanging over our heads, so we're going to address those issues. I appreciate that. I'm sure everybody gets some answers for you. We'll be bringing answers back to you of what we've done and what has happened and what the – what information we've received. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else? I just want to clarify that we're talking about the 911 operators picking up the phone. It had nothing to do with our police response or anything. The people are happy with our police response. They get there fast. They're great, but it's that initial call. Yes, sir. That's the truth there. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. Sir. Yes, it's important that we clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mayor and Council. I'm confident you'll take care of it. Chair Salazar. Yes, sir. We'll take care of it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Report by Animal Care Manager Chad Ensign.